To get started, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Meet elementary school Ryan. Elementary school Ryan loves playing with dogs, eating ice cream, building Legos. But elementary school Ryan really doesn't know anything about climate change. You can see he's unscrewing a plastic water bottle. He has a plastic bag in his lap. He doesn't know that the single-use plastic will never degrade. The future of the planet was the last thing on his mind. Since then, he's had some really fantastic teachers, Mr. Donaldson and Mr. Town, who've educated him on the important environmental science issues of today. He's been empowered to have an impact on improving the sustainability of his community. In November of 2016, a few friends and I predicted that our administration planned to exit the Paris Climate Accord. As youth of America, we knew that the two degrees Celsius mark was essential for preventing the irreversible effects of climate change. We saw that it was essential for our generation's success that we make sure that we maintained our position in the Paris Climate Accord. We pledged our school to meet the Paris Climate Accord and reduce our carbon emissions by the 28%. First, we did research to understand how much uh, carbon emissions our school contributed. We found that for every kilowatt hour of electricity we didn't use, we could prevent 1.2 pounds of carbon emissions from being emitted. I led waste audit sessions in which we would weigh the amount of trash and recycling we had, and then we would sort it correctly into waste, compost, and recycling, and I found that more than 75% of the waste could be diverted to compost, and that for every pound diverted, we could prevent 3.6 pounds of carbon emissions. With this data, I went to teachers and implemented a lighting reduction plan as well as a composting system. After these steps, we were successful in reducing our school's carbon emissions by 28%, with more than two tons every month. Thank you. With this success, we compiled our strategies into a launch kit and challenged other high schools in America to take the same steps to reduce their carbon emissions. We worked with over 50 schools in helping them implement these strategies, and we were successful in making sure that high school students understood the value of the Paris Climate Accord. This movement really showed that youth care about climate change, but more than that, we can all make significant behavioral choices that have an impact. We already have the technology it takes. But in reflecting on this experience, I came to realize that a lot of the reasons why I was interested um, in envir environmental science and climate change uh, was because of the teachers which I had in high school and in middle school. Not every school in America has access to these fantastic teachers, Mr. Town, Mr. Donaldson, um, and it's because of a lot of pseudoscience and bias that comes in at these ages that they come to not believe in the science of climate change. In order to address this, I wanted to make sure that climate change was being taught at the elementary school level, just like any other subject, like history or math. I wanted to reach elementary school students where they were. But to first understand how elementary school students knew about climate change, I conducted a survey of third and fifth grade students. I asked them questions about renewable energy and climate change to try and gauge how much they knew. And I got some really interesting responses. I asked students about electricity and where it comes from. And one student responded by saying that electricity comes from bacteria, which, which eat ele electrons and polluted water. Another student said that electricity comes up with electrons which zoom through the air of different places. And a third student simply said, electricity comes from wires. <laughs> I also asked kids about air pollution and how we can prevent it. I found some very common misconceptions. You can see the student said that we can prevent air pollution by picking up the trash, not leaving anything on the floor. And this is probably because teachers were telling their kids uh, to keep the room tidy, and they miscorrelated this with air pollution and trying to prevent it. You'd see another student also said that we could prevent air pollution by just waiting for the wind to blow it away. It was funny for me to see these responses, but I think it was also very disheartening to see that most of the responses were not like this. They were more filled with the word, I don't know, from students like Claire. See, the thing was, elementary school students were really not prepared with the knowledge necessary to answer these questions and didn't have a grasp on these difficult topics. So in order to address this issue, I decided to develop a simulation game to try and reach students where they were, on the computer and on their phones. I really wanted to make sure that elementary school students were being exposed to climate change from a young age to make sure that by the time 10 or 15 years later when they were starting to vote, they had all the knowledge required to be informed citizens. I developed Operation Sustain as a city builder simulation game in which students are tasked with building a successful city. They place all the buildings, including houses, farms, and energy sources, while making decisions for the citizens like the level of taxes or the transportation they use. Over the course of the game, there are several indicators of success of this for a city, including the amount of money, the population, or the happiness level of the citizens. Students learn about key concepts like renewable energy and climate change. 
After I developed the game, I decided to try and implement it in elementary schools in my area. I researched the, the science standards for third and fifth grade students and developed a curriculum guide to use these standards to educate with Operation Sustain. I developed a four-day curriculum guide. On the first day, I would give students a quiz to understand how much they already knew about climate change, and I would show them how to play the game. On day two, I divided the class into different teams, with each team trying to pursue a different goal. One would try and get the highest amount of money, another the most population, and a third the highest science level. At the end of the day, we would bring the students together and lead a discussion to try and discuss, to understand the pros and cons of each strategy. On day three, I introduced challenge mode, in which there were earthquakes, earthquakes floods, and other natural disasters. This really pushed students to understand what were the key driving forces of the decisions they made in their community. In day four, I let students have another day of free play and gave them a final quiz to try and see how they improved over the past four days. I prepared discussions and facilitated them with elementary school students to really cement the uh, understandings that they were getting after playing Operation Sustain. And the results were really fantastic. Students love playing Operation Sustain. In fact, they liked it so much that I documented something which I called the exploding effect, in which when I would walk into classes, students were so excited to play Operation Sustain, they would jump out of their seats and start screaming. <laughs> Teachers themselves said that they could tell their students were learning and they didn't even know it. They were so engaged in the game. And I saw evidence of this myself. I never asked students to take notes, but they were voluntarily writing down their ideas for how to improve the next time they played. They were very eager to bring the Operation Sustain learning experience back into their homes and continue to play. That was great feedback for me, and I could tell that they were having a lot of fun, but more than that, they were actually learning. In fact, on, this, on the quiz that I gave them on day four, I saw that they more than doubled their initial scores, meaning that they were actually reaching the standards they needed for their science level. But these students are more than just numbers. It was really fulfilling to see that they were willing to actually make changes to their daily life. After day four, I would talk with them and hear how they said that they, would, they were more likely to turn off the lights and ride their bike to school after playing Operation Sustain. And of course, it was really great to see some of their responses to the quiz at the end. Again, going back to the question about air pollution, uh, there was a student who on the first day said that we could prevent air pollution by sucking it up with a vacuum. <laughs> on the last day, he gave a fantastic response saying that we could try to conserve energy or to use other forms of energy in the first place. Going back to that question about electricity, I asked this girl in the front row where electricity comes from, and she responded by saying, electricity comes from Gatorade. <laughs> Maybe some confusion with electrolytes. But on the last day, she gave this amazing response, electricity could come from natural resources such as sun or wind. I also asked students about transportation, and I asked them to list three different forms of transportation they could use, as well as which one they thought they should use. This student responded by saying that we could use a car, a bus or an electric car, and that we should use a bus because even though it has more pollution, it can take more people. And that's a very complex response, especially for a third grade student. A response which I don't think elementary school Ryan could have given. And to that end, here's 18-year-old Ryan. You can tell he still has the same funny face, but now he has a reusable bag and a reusable water bottle. He's had the important educators and lessons to be an informed voter and understand the pressing environmental science issues of today. Not every student can have access to such fantastic teachers, but every student can have access to Operation Sustain to become informed voters of tomorrow. As we continue to see the effects of climate change, I think it becomes essential more than ever that we educate youth about the important issues that they will come to inherit. I found immense value in asking simple questions in order to gain a greater understanding about the world around me. If we encourage youth to ask questions and have a scientific curiosity about the world, we will lead a generation that seeks to understand and not simply just to believe. Thank you.